Hi, I'm Andrew Corbett. Thanks for watching this video on the prophet and the book Jeremiah. We're up to part 17 in this series, and the prophet Jeremiah is going to be challenging the people right at the core of their heart. In fact, he's going to be challenging what's deeply embedded in their heart, and that's the idols that they worship, the, the images that they'd set up of the sun god and the moon god, and he's going to show them that these things were, were, were futile, absolutely futile. And he's going to make certain predictions about this. One of the things that I want to bring out of this is, is this application of, if this is what Jeremiah was saying to these people under the Old Covenant, what's God saying to us through this prophecy that Jeremiah was giving them today in the New Covenant? And surely it's about the condition of our own heart. I hope that we can hear this and engage with this and really allow the Holy Spirit to do a deep work in, in our own hearts so that we can be fully devoted to Christ. At the end of this video, I'll talk to you more about how you can receive not only the, this video uh, for future reference or to give away to somebody, but the, the videos in the continuing series. So I'll talk to you soon. And so we have the very early record of uh, his, his calling into being a, a prophetic ministry. We then have him at around about age 17, 18, beginning to stand publicly and begin to declare things publicly. About the age of 20, he would have been inducted as a priest. He was the son of a priest. About the age of 20, he would have been able to participate in the temple ceremonies. And at that opportunity, he's standing in the gate, we read in chapter 7 of Jeremiah, where instead of offering the sacrifices, he declares the word of the Lord in front of the king at the risk of his own life. And for that, he is beaten within an inch of his life. We will read later on as we come into chapter 10 of this prophet. We're in the first 17 verses of chapter 8 this morning. That Jeremiah gets to this part of his life in chapter 10 and he says to God, I quit. I've had enough. I don't want to do this anymore. I've got no friends. My family have disowned me. I can't go home. No one likes me. I'm sick of doing this. But then something rises in Jeremiah. It says, oh God, you've captured my heart. You've captured my heart. So God, I recognize my attitude needs adjusting. And he says this beautiful prayer, God, change me and correct me. But do it gently. In chapter 7, Jeremiah lists the litany of sins that the people were committing. And the biggest sin was that they were worshipping the sun as the supreme god called Molech. They were worshipping the moon as his wife. She was called Astarte or Asherah. And she was called the queen of heaven. And the prophet Jeremiah denounces their devotion to the sun and the moon, denounces it as, as one of the worst forms of idolatry. But then he crowns it by saying this, in all of this you claim to be serving and worshipping me. It wasn't the murder. It wasn't the idolatry. It wasn't the adultery, the sexual sin. It wasn't all this. It comes down to this, that the people were then worshipping the sun and the moon and their ultimate expression of worship was to take their little babies, go down into the valley of Hinnom, there's a certain part of the valley where the, the rubbish would pile up so much that they built a furnace just to burn the rubbish. That was the place called Tophet. It's, it's written T-O-P-H-E-T-H. Tophet looks like Topheth, but it's pronounced Tophet. And in Tophet, the people would take their babies, lift up their babies and say, we give this to you, Molech, and throw their babies into the furnace. And all the while think that this was acceptable to God. Come with me. Chapter 8, verse 1. At that time declares the Lord, the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of its officials, the bones of the priests, the bones of the prophets, 
and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be brought out of their tombs. And they shall be spread before the sun and the moon and the host of the heaven, which they have loved and served, which they have gone after, which they have sought and worshipped, and they shall not be gathered or buried. They shall be as dung on the surface of the ground. Death shall be preferred to life by all the remnant that remains of this evil family in all the places where I have driven them, declares the Lord of hosts. What's happening here is the prophet Jeremiah is looking to that day when Babylon would ultimately invade Jerusalem. And inv invading the, uh, Jerusalem back in those days, armies were paid by plunder. And the plunder they got was their wages. And so many of the soldiers would literally go into the tombs of the kings where they were buried with their rings and jewellery and take the jewellery from the tombs. And in order to do that, they would take the bones and just throw them out of the tombs. It's an act of desecration. But you see how God is telling the people through the prophet Jeremiah how it will happen? It will happen in full view of your God the sun, of your God the moon. See what they do to help you at that time. They will do nothing for you. How dare you insult me like this? I will insult your memory. God is saying. And this very thing the prophet says was going to happen did indeed happen.